This is the Adometer. It comes in a very nice box. And here it is. It's a dial adder. It has eight dials and it's uh, made of uh, metal but with plastic uh, number wheels. On this side uh, it has a clearing lever and also a stylus. And uh, yeah, if you pull the clearing lever the stylus pops out so uh, you can then uh, start using it. The dials uh, have uh, little holes here. For example, um, if I want to add 40, I put the stylus next to the big 4 and turn it clockwise. And if I now add 180, I add a 1 to the hundreds place and an 8 to the tens place. And as you can see, it carries automatically. To subtract, you simply turn the opposite direction. So to subtract uh, 40, I'll, uh, yeah, you don't put it into the four, in the big four, but next to the, uh, in the hole next to the small four on the outside. And then you turn it the opposite direction, and yeah, it carries as before in that direction as well. So it, it goes in both directions. This machine was made by the Reliable Typewriter and Adding Machine Company in Chicago and it was first made in about uh, 1927, in uh, late 1927 and for its time this was a really advanced uh, small adder this is the first one to uh, have carries working in both directions, both for addition and subtraction. All the other adding machines of this type had, had subtraction where you had to use complementary numbers. It was also one of the first to have uh, a, a simple clearing mechanism like this. So you just pull the tab all the way out and push it back in. also has a nice feature of uh, a ruler at the top, an 11 inch ruler, and this uh, storage space for the stylus is very nice, so uh, you'll never lose a stylus. And on this uh, side it actually says clearing lever and stylus. On the front it also has the instructions for adding, use last large figures and turn to the right, to subtract, use small figures, turn to the left. On this side is a small letter B, right there, and that indicates the model number. Model B is the most common one, but the other models had, uh, for example, uh, for example, model D was uh, similar to this, but with a, a centimeter ruler and other models had uh, fractions or were made for uh, British currency <coughs> with shillings and pence. Uh, yeah, so that's about it for this uh, adding machine. I'll, uh, I'll try and open it up and see, uh, see what's on the inside. I'll have to remove all these all eight screws on the top This takes a little while.
and now I'll also have to uh, pry this open because on on the edge here you see it goes uh, underneath this tab so I have to lift it up there we go and on this side as well There we go, now it's popped open. So now we can lift off this whole top casing. And here is the, uh, the inside. You can see all these number wheels and uh, yeah, this is the uh, spring mechanism to make sure that the uh, wheels are aligned all the time. In between each pair of wheels is a small uh, intermediate wheel which has uh, five teeth and that uh, transfers the carry. So if, if one wheel goes over to up to nine there's a, there's a, a pin on this wheel and that pushes this, uh, this intermediate wheel one step and that in turn pushes the next wheel one step as well. Note that because these intermediate wheels have only five teeth, the, the, those teeth are sort of splayed out quite wide, and that allows this wheel to move freely until this wheel, the intermediate wheel moves. Also, uh, the intermediate wheel uh, between uh, these two wheels is at a different height than the wheels on the adjacent adjacent uh, uh, pairs of number wheels. This, this intermediate wheel is at a higher level than that one. That way the uh, mechanism for triggering a carry here doesn't interfere with the mechanism for triggering a carry here. Uh, the carry mechanism is quite nice. It's just this, this long lever. Um, with uh, teeth. As you can see there's a small bit without any teeth here. That's because in the rest position you don't want the teeth to uh, keep hold of the number wheels. So the teeth are only on the sections in between, in between the number wheels. And underneath each number wheel there's a, a, uh, a gear with uh, that would have ten teeth, but one tooth is missing, and that missing tooth is is why it would uh, would stop turning once it's reached zero. Because once that missing tooth is at the bottom, these uh, teeth on the rack don't uh, interact with it anymore. And there's only room for a few teeth in between each uh, pair of wheels. So there's four teeth on this one, five teeth on the next section, then four teeth and five teeth and so on. So you, it, you have to pull it out a distance of uh, yeah, two number wheels so that you get a section of four and a section of five passing each, each wheel in the, in the system. But if you look all the way on this end, you'll notice of course that this number wheel is quite near the end. So there's no room to have this rack with nine teeth on this end. So what they've done is they made this, this end of the rack collapsible. So when you pull the, pull the rack, it extends out so that you have a, a section with four, four and a section with five teeth. Or maybe it's the other way around. And uh, yeah, so that that's, uh, extends. And then when you push it back, it collapses again. So if I put this on 9, you see you get 5 uh, clicks first and then the extended part comes out and that does, that does the final 4 clicks. Some of uh, the older machines apparently have uh, a serial number but uh, 
yeah, so many were made after a time they uh, abandoned that. It seems that these machines were made until the 1950s or so, but uh, then uh, cheap alternatives were made in plastic, like the uh, Sterling uh, Dilematics. And uh, yeah, those Sterling Dilematics have a, a similar instruction on the case. And uh, yeah, those were so much cheaper that uh, yeah, I think this one was uh, stopped production. The, uh, the, the logo, this was uh, trademarked. Uh, that trademark was renewed in 1969 and used in the early 1980s or late 1970s for certain um, electronic uh, calculators, hand calculators pocket calculators. So uh, yeah, other than that, uh, one more thing, the uh, Reliable Typewriter and Adding Machine Company, they also made the Vipo Add, which was a, a small slide adder, and uh, yeah, both that adder and, and this one was mostly sold through mail order. In the beginning, in the early 1920s, this company did actually have a, a store in, in Chicago where they sold uh, calculators and typewriters of uh, various brands. But uh, I think when the depression hit, the, uh, the store closed and they uh, relied solely on these uh, mail order small calculators. So that was the uh, adometer. Thank you for watching.